That was unexpected, but what about what about the kid? Maybe if I leave and come back, something might happen. She's been acting differently lately. Before she'd respond to conversation. Just as long as it didn't conflict with her timeline. But now nothing gets a reaction from her. What happened? No idea. Well, Miller did go and tell her that Skullface is dead. If anyone should want revenge against him, it would be her. It's not exactly like an angel of peace to cheer for someone's death, now is it? There, take a look at this too. See it? Right there. The wound is open. Yeah. It was all closed up, and then it went back to this. But why? The medic has no idea how it happened. He figures it must have been self-inflicted. That's rough. Did she have to cut herself open from scratch? Because her wound should have been healed by now, right? Like, didn't the didn't the incident that led to her getting that wound happen like ten years ago or something before the coma? I don't remember how long the coma was, but it was really long, like longer than it would take for stitches to heal. So why does she still have? But did, did she has she did she have stitches before or did she literally just like cut open her own star her own scar tissue? Are we gonna find out that she put another bomb inside her body later? Gonna have to check back later, I guess. Oh, a trader's caravan on extreme mode. I'm worried about this one. Boss, about those Walker gears deployed by the CFA. It appears that it's not just the CFA. PFs all along the Angola Zaire border are also getting equipped with them. The bipedal technology was developed by the Soviets, but Cypher's the one supplying it to the PFs. The question is why? What's in it for them? The answer may lie in the compensation being traded to Cypher by the PFs. Many outfits operating in Africa get locally mined resources as spoils of war. Diamonds, nuggets of gold, and rare metals. According to the intel team, there's a PF convoy that regularly transports the goods. Escorted by armored vehicles, no less. Pretty heavy security for crossing the remote Angolan savanna. I can't imagine Cypher would be so interested in minerals alone. Those convoys have to be transporting something else. Something that holds the key to Cypher's plans. Boss, I want you to extract the truck, cargo and all from the PF convoy. Let's find out what Cypher's real goals are. Boss, your objective is to steal an entire truck from a PF convoy. We don't have a fix on the truck we want, but the intel... 
intel team has spotted the unit that's been tasked with escorting it. They're stationed at the guard post to the north of Nova Braga Airport on the Savannah. The rendezvous with our target will be at any time now. Start by heading to that guard post. Then follow the escort unit. It should lead you right to the target truck. Boss, extract them from the mission area. You can check the target details on your iDroid. Steal the cargo. So if I remember correctly, this is the one where I have to go to the airport and get the cargo around here, I believe. Try my best to get over there. Where's it telling me to go right now? Oh yeah, that's where the intel is. I don't need your intel. I remember this mission. In fact, that's like the number one... Oh yeah, right. Quiet. Uh, scout that airport out. Still trying to make her like me more. Hello, airport. So I'm hoping there's still a convenient tank for me to hop in like last time, because that definitely saved my ass from the uh, ghosts. They cut the skulls, sorry. But yeah, last time I just hopped the fence and Fulton did and got out of here. Uh, well, unlike my third try, there was a, this a lot of colorful mistakes made with me trying to get this device th this done last time. Hope you're doing a good job, Quiet. I'm gonna feel like an idiot if, if I'm misinterpreting what mission this even is, and I'm doing it wrong. Hello, Sniper. Fire. Let's go ahead and take out their Sniper. That was a little bit more alerting than I thought it would be. Hey, buddy. That's not good either. Fire. Oh, the enemy's on combat alert. Now that they know we're chasing them, the target will make an end run to its destination. Hurry up and find that truck. All right, that was bad news. Okay, that's bad news too. Everything's bad news. Everything's bad news. I'm sure I'll be fine, or super dead. Probably super dead. Do I need two of these, or one? I don't remember. It just goes on its own. Cool. It required two as a weird accident last time, or something, maybe. Oh shit, I don't see a tank here. <laughs> there was a tank here last time, and that was really convenient for me. Okay. Screw you guys. I'm gonna die here. Ah. Well, it was worth trying, because that would have been a great way to escape. Okay? Drama, 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 drama. Quick extract. Extract, extract. Go, go, go. Uh, smoke. This will probably help me out this time. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Anyone here this time? Oh, they're not even here this time. Screw you guys. Quickly. Quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Go, 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 go. Yeah. <laughs> Extraction arrived at Mother Base. And I was Development worried. <laughs> that was actually really easy. Amazing. Mission complete. That right there is why you're the best, boss. The one and only. Wow. I think once upon a time I spent like 90 minutes on that mission. Partly because of how much time it, t it takes to run around <laughs> trying to get your way in there. And bam. All right, that was straightforward. Boss, we searched the truck you recovered. There were two primary types of cargo. First, drums of malachite, a copper ore. That took up most of the truck bed. But malachite isn't valuable enough to warrant an escort. The real cargo was likely the second item, a shielding container. The contents, yellow cake. That's right. The raw material for a nuclear weapon. 
That might point to the weapon to surpass Metal Gear Emmerich told us about. But who can say? Thing is, there isn't a lot of it. Not enough to make a nuclear warhead. Give us some time. We'll look into it. Try to figure out why they had this under such close guard. All right, we got our, our first new story mission in a little while. Extraordinary. Using the photograph in an informant's final transmission, retrieve the film canister containing classified information. Boss, we need you to get back a film canister one of our informants hid in the field. He was working under my orders to investigate the extraordinaries that showed up in Cyprus. The man on fire and the floating boy that keeps showing up where they're not welcome. Apparently, they were the subjects of some top-secret research conducted by the Kremlin. Unfortunately, that meant our informant drew the attention of the KGB's Directorate S, and they took him out before we could make contact. The good news is he placed a report in a film canister and hid it somewhere in Spookmake Keep. Just before he died, he transmitted VI of the hiding place to us, but the data was cut off part way through. The image is far from clear, but it might provide the clue you need. We'll be analyzing the data further to try to clear it up, but for now, get to Spook May Keep. The KGB have already dispatched a Spetsnaz squad to retrieve that film canister and cover the whole thing up. Boss, there's no time to waste. Head to Spook May Keep and use the VI as a clue to find and retrieve that target. Why was Sohalanthropus mobile? How are the man on fire and that kid connected to Skullface's plan? If we can just get that report, we can blow it all wide open. Then we can shake off the last remnants of Skullface and the phantoms he left behind. Boss, retrieve the film canister our informant hid in Spookmate Keep before he died. It contains vital information on Skullface's plan. For now, our only clue is the garbled photograph the informant tried to send us before the end. We're working on analyzing the data, but there's no time to wait. A KGB Spetsnaz squad is after the target as well. Boss, go to Spook May Keep and use the VI to lead you to where the film canister is hidden. It is paramount you retrieve the target before the enemy does. I'm sure we'll be fine. Hey! I took a chance and tried the alternate location. It, it could have dropped here or there. It looks like this one's actually at a decent location for it. Okay, locate and secure the firm, film canister. Um... Quiet. There we go. Just it wasn't there at first. I don't think. Spook may keep. The target is hidden somewhere around there. So we're heading into this keep for our target. Quiet's gonna be scouting. I'm a little bit of a distance away, but not too bad. Oh yeah. We la we landed like less than 200 meters from the target. That's unusually close. Maybe time to scout already. Enemy presence detected. Oh, I see you. Where is this location? Wow. He looks very armored. Not a fan, to be honest. See, where are we exactly? Have I been here before? I'm wondering if this is a place that we've uh, previously gone into or not. If I'm lucky, I'm able to sneak, uh, sneak past some of these initial characters. Hello. Incoming vehicle. <laughs> it's just funny watching it try and struggle over and over again to get every single individual crew member over there. Man, I, if I just fired a grenade right now, this whole day could be easier for me. Boom! They're all gone. Although those guys are in, like, bomb squad armor, so for all I know, that's just as much of a problem for me. Alright, so this is my target over here. Somewhere. Somewhere in here is what we need. A film canister. Is on that glowy thing? That's a that's like a garbage can, is isn't it? Like a garbage fire. 
It could be on one of the individual targets, couldn't it? Huh. I most likely will need to interrogate somebody, right? Unless it's just going to be lying around. Complete. Leg shot. Clouds approaching. Just taking it slow. It's not a huge area to investigate. So presumably wouldn't be in a super secret area. The map has been updated. I'm just trying to see if I can slowly reduce the... Is, are they bringing more people in? What the fuck? Wow, there's a lot of these guys, by the way. Analysis complete. So what I'm wondering is, uh, oop. Can I get that guy at all? So these guys are really armored. I don't like that about them, personally. Holy crap, there's a lot of these guys. Analysis complete. They just keep going for days. Well, you're up there. Oopsie. I missed, didn't I? You should be an easy enough target to get started on. He'll probably pass out over there. That'll take him out. Your legs don't look super armored. Oh, that's bad for me. Oh no. Well, you know what? When in doubt. Balls. <laughs> look at him fly. That's great. Well, it happens, you know? It happens. <laughs> God damn, this is a dense group of guys. It's a pr it takes a long time to load this thing. Oh, they got me anyway. Good job, me. Try some night vision goggles? Oh god. Okay, never mind, I'm fine. I briefly thought I wasn't gonna be able to see anything. Maybe it'll stand out. I don't know if it's on a character or on the ground, is the question. I wonder if I can create annoying distractions everywhere. Let's see. Wait, what was I Look for terrain that matches the VI. The target has to be hidden there. I was just throwing magazines instead of decoys. I was like, I don't remember having so many of these. Hopefully these will be a decent distraction if I find it. Analysis complete. Let's see. Analysis what am complete. I scanning? Oh, a soldier. Well, I went through the back side last time, so maybe if I come in the other side, I'll have more luck. Keep an eye on them, quiet. Y'all doing good. Just trying to get in close a little bit. I don't see anything still... No! Clouds approaching. Don't see me. Ever. Never see anything again, it's annoying. Maybe if I do this. Look at those bad guys, whoa, crazy! You should investigate those guys instead. Look how scary they are, being snake-like. Y'all are bad. You know that? Uh, they're distracted. Just trying to find anything. Central area is unguarded at the moment. They're shooting at the copies of me. I don't see anything. And I'm running out of night vision.
So film canister's tiny, right? So one of them spotted me. They're still shooting the decoys, that's great. Just wandering around. No, bad. You see nothing. You will see nothing. Where film canister at, bro? Oh no. Oh, he's armored. Stop that. Stop being armored. Where film canister at? Is that something out there? Hey, tiny rat. Oh, you scared him away. Is everyone here for the- so I think they said everyone's here for the film canister. Oh, about to get spotted. About to get spotted. Let's maybe go back up- oh. They're coming my way again. This might get noisy really quickly soon. I'm trying. Please do not spot me. You wearing a helmet? probably is. That guy's way out there. Maybe I can make him stay out there. Oh, wrong one. You wearing a helmet or a hat? Oh well. That'll be close enough. He'll probably pass out from that. Nope! Oh god, they're everywhere. This is a problem. That's one less. <laughs> now I'm backwards crawling on accident. How you feeling, buddy? Boss, we fully decrypted the VI data. Now the target's hiding place should be clear as day. Check your eye droid. What's clear as day? Right there? How do I zoom in on that specific spot? Right there. Marker A, right there? No, I feel so lied to. I don't see shit here. Ah. Uh, why'd you lie to me? Why'd you lie to me? Why'd you lie to me? <laughs> no. Why? Shooty, shooty. I'm tired of sneaking through this place where I can't see anything, so I'm just gonna blow you fucks up. I'm gonna blow you all up. Cause fuck you guys. I'm also aiming this very poorly at the moment. Making poor use of my time and my ammo. Do -do 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 -do. Hola. I'll search this place when you're dead. And stuff. Oopsie. Bye. Oopsie. Oh, he's armored, isn't he? Who's an armored motherfucker? Alright. You're gonna be difficult about it. Bye. <laughs> Boom! Take the guy out. Quiet. 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 Fine, I got him. There, this place is mine. See, it was even a mission task, probably. Night vision goggles. Searching this place that I got tired of trying to stealth through because there's so many guards and I don't even know what my objective is. Do -do 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 -do. Just having a swell old brisk through the ruins looking for a tiny ass film canister which is a freaking tiny thing to have to find in the first place. I really hope it shows up in night vision goggles or I'm gonna lose my mind. Do do do, checking out the outside perimeter. Here we go. Up. Damn you rat, giving me hope. Damn you rat. Oh, here they come. Here comes the backup. I'm sure things are gonna turn out great for them. Oops. Oh, I can't tell them to tra trank them. Get them. 
Yay! Now I'll go trank the other one in a second. Can I can I target him yet? He doesn't look like he's particularly guarded. Boopy. And then they were mine. Since you guys are alive, you get to go to space. Yay! And you! Now back to looking around. With my night vision goggles. He's coming too. My sweet neat neat vision goggles. They, ooh, what's that? You know what, rat? I'm getting sick of your bullshit. I'm getting real sick of your bullshit. Can I grab you? There you go, and you can't distract me anymore. Do 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 checking around rocks. There's little weapons on the ground that glow, which makes me slightly more distracted. Think oh, what was that? Oh, is that it? Wait. Oh, there it is. Is that... Son of a bitch. I thought that was a place that I checked, but I'm not sure. But goddamn, that was tiny. That was real tiny. Did I never just... Did I never just... <laughs> I never actually activated those. That's funny. They were supposed to be a distraction, but then I just blew everything up, as it turns out. Which was equally effective. Um... Helicopter location is right next to the extraction point, so... Support helicopter. I suppose I can call it in just so I can have a way out of here, but, uh, ultimately be just extracting by running over, over there for a while. These Chapter 2 story missions are feeling really brief. Like, the first one was, here's an open field with some walkers in it. Grab that guy real quick, it's over. And this one is like, you go into this area and really quickly get that thing. You did it. And the, the, one of the other ones was it was extracting guys in the forest, I think. Let's see, I should just run this way till I get out of the zone, since the helicopter will take longer, as far as the rating goes. But yeah, like... That's it. You've made it out of the hot zone. No sign of the enemy. Mission complete, boss. This is Pequot. Arriving shortly at LZ. Mission complete, boss. Oh. Probably went probably because of all the murder. Oh well. I gotta say, these Act 2 missions seem, or Chapter 2 missions seem to be kind of a bummer so far. Like the first one missions were pretty good. And then this one, two thirds of the missions so far are just reruns, but slightly modified versions. And then the third that aren't new are let's see, one was go extract that dude in the middle of the field before the robots find him. Or the walkers find him. The next one was extract three canisters in the forest. That I've been to already, and this one was go go find a tiny film canister on the ground. Eh. Oh, those random guys were actually surprisingly good. They seem to have auto extracted me. Which makes me think that we're probably going to do story mission, something story related on the uh, uh, mother base at least. Nope, I'm still here. Mission list updated. I've updated the mission list. We received a new job offer. The details are on your iDroid. I'm still here, and the helicopter is gone. Not ready. Not ready to pick me up like I thought he'd be. We finished decoding the informant's report. That floating kid we've run into a few times now. Looks like he was a test subject in clinical experiments. The Soviets called him the third boy. The third boy was brought to a lab on the outskirts of Moscow from Czechoslovakia, after which he was due to be sent to a research center in Leningrad, then Siberia, and finally an academic town in Novosibirsk. It doesn't appear that the researchers witnessed the talents we've seen from him, but nevertheless, he was quite the popular subject. His latent cognitive abilities suddenly awoke en route to Moscow. According to the report, the third boy was easily influenced by other individuals' biofields. Evil thoughts, in particular. They affected his mind like a virus. Extreme anger or resentment, motives for revenge, in other words. Now, during the transport flight to Moscow, the boy was exposed to a powerful mental energy field coming from a certain individual. Ever since, being conscious of his powers, 
He's become a sort of energy generator. What's unique about him is the way his acute telepathic abilities get taken over by another person's will. The boy began to physically parasitize individuals experiencing extreme anger and codify the host's desires. This includes amplifying the host's natural strengths. Or, in accordance with the host's desires, he can also implant program code in another individual, making them a puppet, essentially. Human neural synapses transmit weak electrical currents between neurons. These electrical currents, though at a level difficult to observe, warp the magnetic field outside the body. The third boy is able to pick up these weak fluctuations. Contrary to psychotronics, which involves controlling the human mind, his abilities as a receptor are too high. The emotions he picks up from another individual are amplified and unleashed into his body as they recur in his brain. They turn into microwaves, which then affect the physical world, triggering paranormal phenomena like the spontaneous combustion of organic matter or a psychokinesis, you know, moving an object without touching it. There's one other thing. While he's parasitizing a host, the boy's ego gets shut away, allowing the will of the host to take control of his powers, like some annoying static drowning out your own voice. That means he isn't responsible for what's been happening. Somebody's extreme anger has manifested through the third boy's powers in ways none of us could have predicted, which would mean this was going on somewhere around us. Looking back on it, a lot of things make sense now. The man on fire, Sahalanthropus, they both came to life thanks to the third boy's powers. Everything has been happening through him as a catalyst. We first saw him in the hospital on Cyprus. The boy parasitizing the man on fire's desire for revenge gave him his new abilities in return. He next appeared at the Hamid fighters fort where the honeybee was hidden. There, the boy parasitized Skullface's vengeful mind. He controlled Sahalanthropus, making it do whatever Skullface wanted. Same goes for when we extracted Emmerich onto the chopper. When he appeared at the Devil's House in Central Africa, Skullface's will controlled the man on fire via the third boy's powers. Everything is clear up to this point. But even the informant couldn't pinpoint who the host was in the cave within Serac power plant. Sahalanthropus suddenly became active, then crushed not only the man on fire, but Skullface as well. Surely neither of them could have been the host. Who else was at that location and bore anger more extreme than either of them? Whose will was controlling Sahalanthropus? According to the report, emotions transmitted in children's brains affect the surrounding magnetic field more strongly. Cerebral nerves are covered with insulation called myelin sheaths to increase impulse speed. The reason for this leakage has to do with the fact that children's myelin sheaths are still developing. So, how many children do you remember being there? Children with a burning desire for revenge and bearing a grudge against you. I can think of only one, Eli. We don't know what kind of life he's had, but the resentment he's shown toward adults is nothing short of extraordinary. The third boy resonated with Eli's mind. And that means Eli bore the strongest animosity of all individuals within the boy's reception range, estimated to be a three-mile radius, beating out even Volgan and Skullface. The third boy has probably remained hooked on Eli's anger since. You remember at the Devil's House, the third boy showed an interest in Shabani? That must have been his ego making a rare appearance. He may possess abilities far beyond anyone else in the world, but he's still a kid. Maybe them both being kids was enough to bring them together. And if so, maybe with Eli, he isn't feeding off him, but acting in symbiosis with him. So what kick-started the third boy's powers? If we look at the location and time that his plane went down, we can make a pretty good guess. When the plane experienced the first anomaly, it gave an accurate report of its position to a control tower. Due north of the Black Sea, 125 miles east of Kiev. Dead south on the Black Sea is Cyprus's Green Line. So the plane's position was directly north of the hospital where you'd been asleep for nine years. And this anomaly was reported at exactly the same time that you woke up. 
The plane was enveloped in flame from the inside out. The fuselage burnt to ashes. There were no survivors, at least not publicly admitted. Your thoughts formed a synchronicity with the boy's psyche and were amplified inside his brain. That would have been more than enough to trigger his abilities. Your rage was like a big bang in his head, blowing the lid off his powers. The boy was then secretly moved to the lab outside of Moscow where Volgan was comatose. There, Volgan's thoughts resonated with the boy and he was awakened. Volgan became the man on fire, hell-bent on getting revenge on you. His instincts led him straight to you. Skullface knew Volgan from Operation Snake Eater, or perhaps from even before. Monitoring this pair of extraordinaries, he discovered the hospital and sent his assassin and XOF. Skullface was probably watching the situation from close by. Then, realizing how useful these two test subjects could be, he approached them. Reacting to Skullface's thirst for revenge, this time the boy let Skullface's will control Volgan. Volgan, at times driven by personal revenge, at times through Skullface's will, kept on moving, though his body was little more than dead meat. Perhaps there were moments where even your thoughts affected him as well. But without the boy's power, it was like the plug had been pulled from the socket. Everything was powered by anger, malice, revenge. This is how the end of the report sums things up. Both the third boy and the man on fire were originally test subjects of paranormal research for military applications, like telekinetically controlling the leader of an enemy nation and making him launch a nuke, or stopping the heart of someone on the wrong side of the Berlin Wall, experimenting with latent human abilities. They were used as tools of the Cold War. The boy's only crime was being born with unique gifts but he was sacrificed on the altar of war. His life reduced to slavery under other people's wills, turned into a living weapon with no will of his own. And eventually the only emotion he could feel must have been the desire to get revenge for the hand he'd been dealt. Boss, it's you that awakened the boy's powers, but there's more to it than that. I guess the anger emanating from you was something he could truly relate to.